What's up guys and welcome to another episode. Uh, in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to actually use DriveDroid on a Android device to install your favorite Linux distribution. Now you're going to have to have um, your DriveDroid installed. I do have another video which I will put a link in the description how to install it. Uh, it's free, it's in the app store, you can get it, you can just google it and how to use it. So that's in a whole other video but this video is going to be particularly showing you the process of me actually using it and showing the process of it actually working. So as you can see right here, I do have um, Elementary OS Freya and Ubuntu 14.04 already downloaded onto this device. Now I use this device purely as a data storage device as well as a kind of a live USB stick. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is I'm gonna go ahead and touch my Ubuntu file and you're gonna see that it says uh, pick, choose one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the writable Give it a second here, sorry for that. There we go. So that's how that's gonna work. The next thing that you're gonna need is actually gonna be a cable, and not just any cable, you need to make sure you have a data cable. Uh, there's some USB cables out there that aren't data cable, so it's not gonna be able to transfer any data, it's just purely for ch uh, charging. Uh, another thing that you're gonna need is going to be a mouse. Whether it's a Bluetooth mouse, I'm pretty sure Bluetooth mouse should be able to work. Uh, but I'm going to recommend, actually a Bluetooth mouse wouldn't work because you wouldn't be able to get to the Bluetooth settings to change it. So you're going to need a USB-based mouse. As you can see here, I just have a wireless USB mouse and I actually just have it plugged in here. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is my device has already been turned off, is I'm going to go ahead and take my cable. I'm going to plug it into an open USB port. All right. Since this file has already been hosted, as you can see, there's that little icon right there as well as so if I pull down. It says hosting image right there. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my device. Now you would need to recommend that some devices, as I needed to push escape right there, as you see, nothing got picked up. So I'm gonna come in here. Let's go ahead and restart it and see if it changes. As it looks like it is not picking up. So let's try it one more time. Normally it should just pick, there it is. Normally it should just pick it up right up. I didn't, don't think I had it plugged in all the way. So as you can see now, let me see if I can adjust this just a little bit. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I don't need this device anymore. I just need to leave it the way it is. And we're gonna do everything from the computer. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit right here. Try to make things a little easier for you to see. So what it's asking me is when you boot up your device, uh, majority of people know this type of stuff, but anybody that doesn't know it, uh, know this type of stuff. When you boot up your device, you're going to notice that it says usually a command somewhere to get into your boot devices, because when a PC first starts up, it boots in a, an order. So as you can see here, this is the order that my computer boots in. So no matter what, it was always going to boot into my hard disk, and my hard disk already has Elementary OS installed. But I'm going to go ahead and remove that and replace it with Ubuntu 14.04 for this video. Now I do go back and forth with Linux distributions almost on a daily basis. It's kind of a bad, ridiculous habit that I have going on right now that I really need to cut it out. But I just love installing Linux and I love messing around with it. So what we're going to do now is since I have this all set up, is I can go ahead and press number two. And you're going to see that it's now down at the bottom right here that it is booting into my Ubuntu, not my elementary OS. And this should take a split second. This process is actually pretty easy, pretty standard, pretty walk throughable, I guess. You know, it's going to guide you all the way through it. It's just we're not going to have any trackpad support no matter what in the beginning. So we need to, that's where this USB mouse is going to be, you know, mandatory. Uh, it is also recommended that you are on a Wi-Fi connection or you have a Wi-Fi connection or even an Ethernet cable plugged into your device if your device has that option available. If you don't have the internet, you can still install Ubuntu, but it's going to be kind of basic. And it's better to get all the background stuff installed at the same time so you don't really have to worry about it. So as you can see right here, it says my network's device is uh, not connected, but it's going to ask me to do it manually. So I will go ahead and go install Ubuntu. That is my wireless, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will actually tilt this up really quick as I go through that. We'll come back down. And that should go ahead and connect. So as you see, it connected to my internet. We'll go to the next one. Now it's going to ask you for your checkpoint. So I have at least 6.4 gigabytes available of drive space. It is plugged into a power source and it is connected to the internet. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and check mark that because I want to have a lot of my stuff install as well as my third party application in the background. So again, I just like all this stuff to be installed because you don't have to manually do it. There's a lot of files like codecs to be able to watch stuff, play flash, all that type of stuff. And instead of manually doing it, you can do that. You can just click those buttons, makes it easier. Now, of course, if you are a diehard Linux individual, you know, you can just skip that stuff and you can go in and choose what you want to do. But as for me in this video, I'm just going to keep it kind of standard because I don't want to, uh, I want to keep on track with the rest of the people that kind of watch these videos. Now, here's your option. You can either install it alongside the operating system you already have. So if you do have Windows, you can install your Linux next to it. So you can have a dual booting machine as well as a Mac. Or you can completely re I can completely remove elementary OS Freya and install Ubuntu. And that is the option I'm going to choose because the machine that I am on is uh, very limited on space. And so I don't want to take up any of that space. I only have 32 gigabytes on this. It is only just a Google Chromebook an Acer version. So now it is asking me where my location is, and yes, I am on the west coast of America. Hello to the rest of the world, if you're watching it, or wherever you're watching it from. I do get quite a few people from the UK, so hello to you guys. Let's go. All right, so this is all fine. If you want to change in your keyboard or any of that stuff, do it here. You can always do this in your computer. Now from here, you need to type in your information. So my name is Jonathan Parkinson. Yes, like the disease, and no, my family has nothing to do with it. Uh, my computer name, my username, and my password. So again, I'm just going to mark these up really quick. Uh, even though you'll be able to see this stuff through uh, my, my terminal, you won't be able to see um, the entire process. So, almost done here. Sorry, I have to type all this at a very odd angle because of this camera. Press continue here. Should be good. And there you go. So now this is the next step that's going to be happening through here. And all that's happening is all my files are going to be copied. Uh, a lot of downloading is going to be happening in the background. This process, depending on your internet connection, if you have the fastest internet in the world, could take about 15 minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, if you have a little bit slower internet connection, it could take about 30, 45 minutes. And if you have a really slow connection, it could take up to an hour. And that is just me guesstimating, estimating. And that's it when it comes to installing Ubuntu. Now, when this process is completely done, I'm going to be greeted with my uh, greeting with a complete installation screen. It's just going to be a little bar written in the middle. It says your installation is complete. Press enter, continue. I will then press enter. And another screen is going to pop up and say, please remove your installation USB drive and press enter to continue. So I can either come in here and I can manually just disconnect it from right here, or I can come down and I could disconnect this cable right here and press enter, whatever is easier for you and whatever you'd like to do. If you're on a dead Android device, then just leave it plugged in and manually turn it off and you can just let it charge still. And that's it when it comes to installing Ubuntu, elementary OS, Arch Linux, I mean, when it comes down to any of these installations, this drive droid is by far the best thing that's ever happened to us. So if you see, if I go into the download images here, I'm about to get a ton of image listings here. I am on an extremely, extremely slow internet connection, unfortunately. So this video is going to take quite a while for me to probably get up. And I'm probably just going to skip this part if this doesn't load for me here because this is a little ridiculous. Let's try it one more time. Anyways, you just, oops, you would just add an image, download one, and normally I'd have a list right here, but I'm on such a slow internet connection, my list probably won't even generate right now. I probably have to let it sit here. Maybe I'll let it sit here while I'm finishing this up. So yes, um, this is it when it comes to the installation of it. Uh, go ahead and get DriveDroid. I believe you will need root access. I'm not 100% sure. You'll have to double check with that. Uh, all my devices are rooted and I wouldn't know any difference between that. But that's it when it comes to that. If you do have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Uh, go over to Android's you know, Google Play Store, get DriveDroid, give a thumbs up or a plus one to the developer. And you know, if you want to leave a review, more than welcome. Tell them thank you for the, from all of us. 
And uh, that's it. Uh, if you do have any questions, like I was just saying, you know, leave them down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, and I will get back to you in the next video. See you guys.